for us, she was smiley and excited and she loved her brother. She was very excited whenever Gray was around because Gray was a wacko, crazy toddler. And at around six months, we started to notice she wasn't hitting her milestones. And um, I mean, she looked normal, behaved, you know, fairly normal. I mean, we already obviously had Gray. Uh, we had her tested and nine days after her first birthday, we found out that she had infantile tay sacs They were testing, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her because we said, no, no, it can't be tay sacs We already know Kevin's not a carrier, and it's literally not possible. Both people have, both parents have to be a carrier. So we kept telling doctors, no, it can't be tay sacs We actually were tested, um, but something went wrong with my test. Uh, so we thought we had our bases covered, and we didn't. We are fairly certain because of some things that went on at that time, because of what happened to us, some of that national testing was changed. So we know the testing protocols were improved as a direct result of what happened to Lila. I mean, past the age of one and a half, I mean, she really was um, not very vocal at all. I mean, never spoke, um, never walked, rarely sat up. She had seizures all the time, like literally all day long. Um, and that it was very hard because as a parent, you know, your kid, in pain, it's very difficult. Um, and you knew she was suffering. Yeah. I mean, until a certain that was, point was hard, yes. where most of her brain function was, was gone, yes. she was suffering. She had yeah. a very difficult life. I mean, it wasn't completely filled with suffering. She had moments of, yeah. especially in her first year of, you know, of happiness. You know, this, these are the moments I always remember. I remember when she rolled over for the first time. And, I, and this was before I knew she had tay -Sacs, So I was really excited that, you know, she was finally rolling over. But... Um, it's, I remember her rolling around in the bed with her brother. I mean, actually, he was doing most of the rolling. It's, it's those things that I remember. The only thing worse than burying your child is watching your child die. Uh, my advice, almost regardless of background, because of the so many genetic diseases that are out there that are preventable and heritable, and these days with DNA testing as advanced as it is, many of these can be found, um, is to talk with their doctors or their OBGYNs or genetic counselor. Know what you're carrying before she's carrying. It's a horrific existence. It's a horrific existence. I know uh, we, there are a lot of people who think that, you know, every life is worth living and I love my daughter and I miss my daughter every day. If I had the ability to go back in time and prevent Lila's suffering and that meant I couldn't have Lila, that would be preferable than having her live the kind of pain and literal living torture that she had for as many years as she had.